What's up, it's a web. Raikwin here, and welcome to the Pokemon Premier League. Oh, I'm so excited to finally be announcing, well, if you follow me on Twitter, you already know it, because I've been tweeting about it a lot. But, if you don't, this is the official announcement that I'm taking part in a brand new league called the Pokemon Premier League. Uh, the concept and like the creator, I guess, of this league is Don Fanatic. Links will be in the description. Well, links will be in the description to everyone in this league because they're all amazing people. Uh, but go check out Don Fanatic. He's the one that created this whole thing, got the ball rolling on this whole idea. So um, go check him out. Uh, this video is just going to be a quick description of what the league's about. And I'm going to go through my team. I've drafted my team. I've got everything ready. And uh, I'm just going to take you through all the stuff that's going down. So... Um, this league is similar to if you've seen other leagues like the GBA or any other league you might have seen. There's quite a few popping up recently. Um, we're similar, but we're not the same. We've come up with a little bit of a different concept. Well, Don Fanati came up with a little bit of a different concept, and we've got the ball rolling with it. So, um, I'm just going to tell you real quick what the league's about, which is we have teams. We draft Pokemon just like other leagues, um, but the way we draft is very different. Uh, what we had was we had a budget of a hundred million pounds arbitrary number is arbitrary and um, Basically each Pokemon has been assigned a value based on how good they are So the better the Pokemon the higher the value and the worse the Pokemon the lower value pretty much We had a hundred million pounds to spend on a team of anywhere between 8 to 11 Pokemon So we have 8 to 11 pokes uh, and so you could try and draft higher value stuff but less mon so eight of them or you could try and do maybe some lower tier stuff but uh stretching out to 11 pokemon if you wanted more options pretty much um so my thought going into this was i wanted a good mix i'm fairly comfortable with most pokes in lower tiers so i wasn't too fussed about that but i did want some big hitters at the same time um, so that's the way the draft went down. We did pick one at a time, going through each team. There's 12 teams in this league, uh, and we went through one at a time, picking Pokemon, until uh, we were satisfied with our team, it was it within the range, and uh, everyone was happy. So, let's get into this. First off, the 12 teams that are in this league, they're great people, really great people. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know most of them before this league started. I did know a few of them, uh, but or, or some of them I knew, but I hadn't spoken to that much. Uh, but we've been getting to know each other a lot recently, and they're all really, really great people. So please, please, links will be in the description. Go follow them on Twitter, go subscribe, all that good stuff, because they really deserve it. They're all really great people. Um, so, as I said, the creator of the league, Don Fanatic, he's in this. We've got um, we've got Shardy, uh, surprise butt sex. On Twitter, great name. Uh, oh, by the way, sorry. The team names. Don Fanatic is the Tottenham. Blah, 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 blah. Good thing I can talk. The Tottenham Hot Esper. <laughs> Love that name. Um, Shardy is bringing the Bayern Munich. Munich. Uh, we have uh, Onesie Burnett, Alex, uh, and he's the Celta Dino uh, instead of Celta Vigo. If you guys don't know. Um, then we have Tisos, good friend of mine, Tisos. He's bringing Sport Lisbon Brafica instead of Benfica, and it's like Braviary. It's good. I like it. Then we got me. Your boy. I'll say my team name in the end, though. I'll wait for the big reveal of that one. Even though people who follow me on Twitter already know it. But whatever. Big reveal nonetheless. We've got Ethan Erasmus, and he's bringing the Miami Rotom Heat. We've got uh, Fredford bringing the Borussia Dublade. We've got Mighty Mamoswine with the Orlando City Cobalions. We've got Shroom Raver with the Parasec Germain, and I love that name. So much. Parasect Jermaine is so good. Uh, we have Slyro, another great friend of mine. He's bringing the Pittsburgh Pyro. We've got uh, based Ellie, and she's bringing the Teddington Teddy Ursus. And last but not least, we've got possibly my best friend on YouTube, Lace and MC, rounding things out with the Philadelphia Flygons. So, those are the teams, and then we have the one that's going to win, hopefully. We have my team, the Nottingham Forest Curse. And we are coming for the cut, baby. Let's do this. Nottingham Forest Curse, shout out to Amazing Tay for designing this awesome logo that's hopefully on screen right now. It is Bay. Love this logo, so thank you very much, Tay, for designing that for me. 
Uh, so let's get into my team. I'm not going to go through everyone else's teams because everyone will be uploading their own version of this video to their channel, so go make sure to go check it out. Again, links will be in the description to all their channels, so go uh, check them out if they've uploaded their videos, which they probably will because I feel like mine's probably going to be last, but whatever. Um, let's get into the team. So I had the uh, the eighth pick in the uh, in the draft. It was a random order. I had the eighth pick in the draft out of twelve, so it wasn't too great. But we did go in like reverse order, so we went one to twelve, and then twelve to one on the next round. So it wasn't too bad. I still got some really good picks. So um, first things first. Uh, my my thoughts going into this, I didn't I didn't want to buy a mega first because I felt like megas weren't super important. I felt like everyone would put a high. Um, amount of importance on their Mega, and I felt like they draft it first and they get that and then they try and build their team around it instead of what I wanted to do is draft a solid team and then pick a Mega that fit. That was my thought going into it. When it came to actually picking something though, I got very twitchy and I got very nervous and I kind of choked a little bit and I picked my Mega first anyway. Uh, because there was some good stuff going. I saw things like Mega Lopunny, Mega Mawile, Mega Gallade was already gone. Things like that, and I was just freaking out a little bit. I was like, ah, I really want... I had a Mega in mind as well, and I was like, it's so perfect. I really want to use it. I've used it before, and I know I can use it. So, I drafted first. Mega Altaria. Altaria, the Mega Altaria. And, uh... It's going to be putting in the finest of work. I was so excited to get Mega Terror because it's so versatile. You can run it special, physical. You can run it defensive with Cotton Guide. It gets access to Heal Bell, Roost. So many things I can do with Mega Terror. I'm so excited to use it. Of course, it's not that quick base 80 speed, but if you combine that with Dragon Dance, it's a huge, huge threat. And no one's going to know what kind of thing I'm going to be bringing until we're in the match. So that is one of the most important things about a league. You have to have versatility. And I feel like Mega Terror is one of the most versatile Megas out there. So... I'm very, very, very pleased to get Mega Altaria, so we'll see if it puts in work. Altaria, gonna be putting in work. Calling it right now. Let's move on to the next pick. Alright, the next pick we got. Uh, I was pretty excited with this next pick. I wanted an offensive fire type, or, well, I wanted a fire type full stop. Uh, I wanted something that was versatile. Uh, again, versatility was key for me in this thing. Needed something that was versatile, and I was very, very pleased with this. It wasn't super expensive, so... Um, I managed to pick up Fire Monkey, the Infernape. We got Infernape. I was so happy with this. Ah, oh, I love Infernape because he uh, he can run so many different things. Again, he can be special, special. He can be physical. He's very quick. He's a good scarf. He can run Sash, Life Orb. He has access to Stealth Rocks, U-Turn. You'll see from this team, I love a bit of Volt Turn. So having a U-Turn is always handy. Get that Squish Initiative. Uh, so many things I can do with Infernape. You can run, and he has Iron Fist as well. Access to Iron Fist ability is spectacular. Uh, just having so many options with Infernape is just so great, and I can just tailor it to whatever my team needs. So, I love that about Infernape, and I'm really excited to use him. I've seen him used in other leagues, and I know he can put him work. I've used him myself in battles, and I know he can put him work. So, I'm pretty excited to use Ape. Fire Monkey is going to be Bay. Calling it now. I said that on the last one, calling it now. I need to stop saying that. Moving on to the third round. Alright, so at this point, I forgot to mention the prices of these mons before, by the way. Mega Altaria cost me 20 million pounds, which is a fifth of my budget on one Pokemon. Infernape was 10 million, and this next mon was also 10 million. Um, and again, I got very twitchy at this point. I wanted a bulky water type. And just as I was thinking that, everyone else started thinking about bulky water types, which was really annoying, because I wanted to wait on this pick for a little bit. There was another thing I wanted, uh, which I had in mind, but uh, I wanted to probably draft that third round, but then people started talking about bulky water types, and I was like, ah, oh, I need a bulky water type, and I don't want it to get picked, because I had one specifically in mind that I really like. And... Um, yeah, there was something that I really, really wanted, and I was really happy I got it in the end. I managed to draft Vaporeon. I'm really happy about that, because Vaporeon is awesome. I love Vaporeon. Base 130 HP is absolutely fantastic, and he's really great, especially defensively, and he has access to Wish and Heal Bell and Toxic Protect, all the usual stuff. But he can also run be, be run physically defense with Acid Armor as well. I've tried it. With max special defense and Acid Armor, like, that thing's that thing doesn't die, like, ever. And he can get the uh, Wish, as I said, the Heal Bell can't be worn down. So I feel like Vaporeon is something I'm going to be really happy to use. Uh, and at the end of the day, in, in stuff like a League, you have to be using mons that you're comfortable with. So 
I was really happy to get Vaporeon. Really, really happy. And, ah, oh, so excited. It's going to be great. Uh, oh, I did, forgot to say Vaporeon's nickname. Finley. Fin. Lee, because puns. Finley, the Vaporeon. It's going to... It's going to be great. So, moving on to the fourth round. Alright, the fourth pick. Now, this is uh, a Pokemon that I wanted in the third round, but I decided to wait a little bit. But I am so, 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 so happy I managed to get this Pokemon. I managed to get Celery, the Celebi, putting in work. Oh, I'm so happy I got Celebi. <sighs> okay, these Pokemon that have base 100 in every stat are amazing in this format because you invest in any one stat it becomes really really good and I can just use it however the hell I want to it has access to setup moves like nasty plot and swords dance it has access to baton pass if I want to use that obviously substitute and then there's stuff like healing wish I love healing wish healing wish is amazing and it can completely change the entire course of a game and oh my god I just love Celery so much it can run uh, physical attacking, special attacking, physical defense, special defense, whatever the hell I want. I can run it as a Scarfer, who knows? I can run it anything, anything I want, Celebi can do. So excited. And it completes my Firewater Grass Core, which is always a nice thing to have. Uh, so I was very happy to get me, to get Celery. Celery the Celebi. And um, that, co that pick cost me £15 million. So at this point, I'd spend, if I can math correctly, that's uh, 30, 40, 55 million. So after four picks, I'd already used over half of my budget. Um, so I did freak out a little bit, but we'll see what I got in the fifth round. All right, pick number five. Now, this is quite an interesting pick because I was originally planning on picking something quite low in terms of like tiers, like are you or below, to try and get a cheap mom. Um, but I realized something hadn't been picked yet. And I realized it was not going to be around for much longer if I didn't if if I didn't pick it, someone else was going to. And I realized it fit my team really well. I needed a spinner. I needed a steel type. You guys can probably see where this is going. Steel type that spins. I picked up Excadrill. Guacamole. <laughs> Guacamole the Excadrill is coming through. This guy is going to be so good. I'm so happy I got him. He's such a fantastic mon in this format. I cannot believe he did not get drafted until the fifth round. That thing's insane. Uh, but he gets, as I said, access to Rapid Spin. Mold Breaker Earthquake is coming through. Jesus Christ, that thing's so good. And he gets, uh, he has access to Rocks. He's a great Scarfer. He can be Sash. He can be, if I wanted to, there's a possibility of something happening, which I'll explain a, bit, a little bit later. Um, which I can use with Sand Rush. And, uh, yeah, he, he is just so versatile. So many different items I could run on him. So many different sets, investments. I've seen him put in so much work in other leagues. It's ridiculous. And um, I feel like Excadrill is going to be one of my best mons for sure. Guacamole is going to be... I can't think of a pun. Insert pun here. <sighs> anyway, that pick cost me £15 million as well. So then at this point, I'd spent 70 million pounds, and I only had 30 million left, and I'd done five Pokemon. So I was like, oh, God, I spent a lot of money. But it's fine, because I've still got some amazing picks left that aren't in the higher tiers. So let's get on with the sixth round. All right, pick number six. It was time. There was a, quite a few different ones I was debating at this point, and honestly, out of all of them, I felt like this one was the best. Uh, the best one for me personally and the best one for the team as well. It was time. And I picked up. Rhyperia. I got Rhyperia. I got Rhyperia the Rhyperia. This guy. You guys know how I feel about Rhyperia. I love that guy so much. And if there's anyone who knows how to use a Rhyperia, it's me. Okay? Just saying. I use him on pretty much every single OU team ever that I ever create. I put in a Rhyperia specifically. I love that guy so much. He is incredible. Physical defense is like unrivaled. That's not true, but he's very, very good. Physically defensive. He's incredible. With solid rock as well, makes him that much better. And not only that, he gets access to rocks. He gets access to rock polish if I wanted to do that offensive set. And he gets EQ, you know, rock slide, all that good stuff. He has dragon tail for phasing. 
He has raw for phasing if I wanted to do that. He want he can have access to you know ice punch and stuff like that. He's got a fantastic move set, and oh my god, I just love Rhyperia. Rhyperia coming through. It's gonna be great. So I was so happy I managed to get Rhyperia. That cost that pick cost me six million pounds. So a lot less. At this point, I'd spent 76 million. I had 24 million left. We're going to move on to the seventh round. All right, pick number seven. Now, at this point, I wanted a spin blocker. Uh, Rocks didn't particularly worry my team, but bearing in mind some of the things I had in mind that I wanted to pick later on, Rocks were going to become a, become a problem. So I wanted a spin blocker. Spin blocker has to be a ghost type. So I wanted a ghost type. I wanted something that could spread status around as well. I wanted a ghost type that could burn things specifically, because burning things is always handy. Or just generally spread statuses. And I was torn between two Pokemon in particular. I was torn between Trevenant and Spiritomb. Now, Trevenant was more expensive than Spiritomb. Trevenant has access to Harvest. He, he can Will-O-Wisp. He can, um, you know, Harvest Citrus Berry is powerful, as is Harvest Lumberry as well. Uh, and he can have that Ghost Stab, the, uh, the Grass Stab as well is always nice. Um... But then there was Spiritomb, who who also has Will-O-Wisp, but he also has Calm Mind, he also has uh, Foul Play, he also has Infestation, and things like that, and it was a cheaper pick. So in the end, I drafted Spiritomb. I went, I decided to go for Spiritomb. I felt like it fit my team a lot more, fit my play style a lot more, um, and I feel like I can really put in some work with Spiritomb. Uh, and... I don't have a nickname yet for Spiritomb because I'm uncreative like that, but if I have one by the time I edit this, it will be on the screen right now, flashing in boxes and stuff. Anyway, I was very happy to get Spiritomb, and people were talking. We were in a Skype call, by the way, once we, when we were drafting all these things. That's how I knew everyone was talking about bulky water types as well. Um, it was, And people were saying Spiritomb was actually a really great pick, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, very happy to pick up, as I said, Spin Blocker. And it gets immunity to Psychic, which is nice, which is going to help Infernape a lot. Um, so yeah, very happy to get Spiritomb. Moving on to the next pick. Alright, round 8. Now, uh, this one was some someone I wanted to get uh, quite a while back, but I decided to hold off because I didn't think anyone else would pick it. Uh, I decided to wait until now. And um, it was lucky I did because apparently, um, I can't remember whether it was that round or the round after, someone wanted to actually pick. Uh, this next Mon. So I was very happy I managed to pick it up, and I realized at this point, my team is kind of slow. Like, Megalterra is base 80, Infernape is very quick, Vaporeon is slow, Celebi is base 100, so it could be quick, but eh. Excadrill is eh. Rhyperia is slow, Spiritomb is slow, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to need something pretty quick. Not only that, I wanted something with Sticky Web, because that was that could always help me. Sticky Web is so great. Um, and again, wanted something that could Volt Switch, because, you know, Vault turn is a thing, so I decided to go for Galvantula. I drafted Galvantula for my eighth pick, and that pick cost me ten million pounds. Did I say Spiritomb cost me six million? I can't remember. If I didn't say it, Spiritomb cost me six million. Galvantula is ten million, and um, ah, oh, Galvantula is going to be coming through. I think. Uh, as I said, Vault Switch is always handy. Compound Eyes, Thunder, Bug Buzz, you know, uh, Sticky Web. As I said, is going to be great. Um, that's mainly what Galvanch is there for, Sticky Webs and Volt Switch, because I do like a bit of Volt Turn. I needed some electric offense, it was something I didn't have. So, it's actually very powerful and very quick, so, um, I was pretty excited to get Galvanch. As I said, it was something I wanted to pick earlier, but I held off, because I didn't think anyone else would get it. Um, so, I was pretty damn happy with Galvantula. So, um, I don't have a... Aragog, I just came up with that name off the top of my head. I'm calling him Aragog. Aragog the Galvantula. Coming through, hopefully. I've said coming through about 70,000 times this video already. Anyway, moving on to round number 9. Alright, round number 9. Now, uh, at this point, I could stop at any point at any time I wanted at this point. Uh, I had my team of 8, so if I wanted to, I could draft more, but I didn't have to. It was up to me whether I wanted to. And at this point, I had, uh, was it 8 million? I think I had 8 million pounds left, so I didn't have a huge amount. Uh, I could only draft things, I could only afford stuff from RU and below. Um, so, um, I, we were talking in the group chat and something came into my head. I had an idea of what I wanted and it completely changed. I wanted to draft Cobalion because I felt like I could really use that well. It was another steel type. 
something that got rocks again, uh, and something that got Volt Switch, uh, something that could be physical, special. I've run Cobalion before and used it to great success, so I knew I could run it well. But something came up in the chat uh, with a lot of other bonds, uh, a lot of other bonds, a lot of other teams drafting things like Gligar and Golbat and Togetic and Porygon 2. I was like, I need knockoff. I don't have anyone on my team with my knockoff. <laughs> with my knockoff? Did I just say that? I don't have anyone on my team with knockoff. And it was just like, damn, I need knockoff really badly. Uh, and I had to look it up because I thought Inferno got knockoff, but it doesn't. Why doesn't Inferno get knockoff? Come on now. Game for you're slacking. Um, so I really, really, really badly needed knockoff. Uh, it's just a very useful uh, move to have anyway, uh, but it was especially important with all these things running around, as I mentioned, the, the not fully evolved stuff. There's a lot of Pokemon that aren't fully evolved simply because of the fact that there's a budget. You have to draw from lower tiers, and lower tiers is not fully evolved things. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that, so I needed knockoff really badly. And uh, I also wanted something that was affordable, so I couldn't go for something like Weavile, because I didn't have enough money for it. So... In the end, I drafted Kingler. Kingler is a fantastic mon. It's in PU, and it's an absolute threat. It is ridiculous. It has access to Hypercutter, so, uh, you know, Intimidate doesn't work. It has a ridiculous attack stat. It can learn Agility. It can Double Dance. It can Agility Swords Dance, and it has Knock Off, as I've said. It has the Water Stab and Crab Hammer and moves like that. Uh, it can just put in the finest, finest of work, and I'm super excited to use Kingler. I haven't used it too much in the past, but I'll put some tests in between now and when we actually start battling, which will be very soon. Um, I'm going to put in some tests between now and then, get used to Kingler, see what he can do, what he can't. And uh, I'm excited to use Kingler. I think he can put in I can th think he can put in work if I use him right, and I generally know how to use Pokemon. Uh, he's going to be putting in work, so we'll see how Kingler uh, does in this format. Mr. Krabs, the Kingler. Shout out to my Emerald Randomizer Nuzlocke back in the day. First ever series I did on the channel. Mr. Krabs the Kingler, coming through. Again, I said coming through without thinking about it. Damn, I'm so unoriginal. Moving on to round number 10. Alright, round number 10. I did actually end up drafting a full team of 11. So this is the penultimate pick. And uh, this is quite an interesting one. This is uh, something that Ellie suggested to me. Thank you, Ellie, for suggesting this. Uh, it's another knockoff user which was really, really helpful, and it's actually quick. As I've said before, my team is kind of slow. Uh, so I've got another quick mon. I've got Sneasel. Sneasel coming through. Botruckle, the Sneasel, coming through. Again, shout out to my Emerald Randomizer Nuzlocke. Botruckle, the Sneasel. Um, and this guy is going to be pretty important in terms of knockoff. Gets priority, form of Ice Shard, things like that. It's very quick. Base 115 speed is going to be outspeeding the likes of Mega Gallade and things like that, and Latios, for example. Um, so very, very quick mon, very useful, very good attack stat as well, uh, so you can actually put in some damage, it's not just there just to be quick little revenge killer or something, it can actually put in some damage as well. So, um, I'm pretty excited to use Sneasel, pretty excited to use Sneasel. Um, main thing, another knockoff user, Psychic Immunity again, which is very nice, another Dark type, um, and a bit of Ice Offense, I was lacking a bit of Ice, so, um... Yeah, always handy to have a bit of ice with things like Landris T and Garchomp floating around. So, ice is always nice. Not once, but twice. And, um, yeah. That was Sneasel. That was pick number 10. We're going to move on to the last Pokemon. Last pick, round number 11, for the Nottingham Forest Curse. Alright, this last Mon. <laughs> I got I got some flack for this one. I got some flack for this, for this last pick. Bear in mind, I only had 4 million pounds left. I only had 4 million pounds left. Which means I could afford either one NU Mon or one PU Mon. That's it. It's all I could afford. So, I was considering going for Bufalan. I was really considering going for Bufalan. Because, great attacker. I love using that guy. Fantastic stats. Really great stats. It gets access to Sap Sipper, which was the main thing. Sap Sipper. Because I did have a bit of a grass weakness on this team. I had Kingler, I had Rhyperia, Vaporeon. I didn't have too much to resist it either. It's neutral on Excadrill, which normally resists it. And I have Infernape, which can't really take grass hits. Uh, Celebi, I mean, eh. And the stuff that resisted it wasn't that bulky. So I wanted some kind of grass immunity or resistance. I was really considering going for Bufalan, but I needed some special offense. I was very physically attacking on this team. I had some possibilities for special in forms of like Mega Alteria, Infernape, and you know Celebi and things like that. But I didn't really want to rely on that to be my special offense when it's not, you know, it's designated role. 
Um, so I wanted something that was special. Uh, I wanted something with a grass immunity uh, and obviously something that was very cheap. Otherwise, I probably would have gone with Gudra because it's Bay. Can't believe Gudra didn't get drafted. Oh my goodness. Um, Gudra would have been great, but I ended up going with it's Prevolution Sligu. I went with Sligu, uh, and people, yeah, people gave me some flack for this pick, but you know what? I don't care. It has base 113 special defense. Stick an Eevee Light in that thing, and that's going to be insane. Uh, it's going to put in so much work, and you know. One week, who knows, I might even bring flipping choice specs, Sligu, because why not, right? It has insane coverage as well, uh, with things like Ice Beam and Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, obviously Dragon Pulse for Stab. Uh, really great coverage on Sligu. And as I said, it gets access to Sap Sipper, which is really cool. Um, so, again, give me a bit of a, a grass immunity. It also has a hydration, I think, as well. Uh, so I could be using that, because uh, someone in the league does have a rain team, so that could come in handy. Um... I was pretty happy with my pick of Sligu. I, I needed that special offense, I really did. Um, I just needed a special attacker, and I wanted something, again, with the Grass Immunity. So I felt like it fit my team pretty well. So, yeah, I was pretty happy with Sligu. Uh, wow, Sligu. Well, and also, I don't have a nickname for Sligu yet, but it will be on screen if I did think of one in time for when I edit this thing. So, that is the Nottingham Forest Curse, everybody. That is the Nottingham Forest Curse, and this team is coming for the cut, baby. Let's do this. I highly doubt I'm going to be coming for the cut because everyone else in the league is absolutely spectacular. Their teams are absolutely amazing. There is not a single bad team in the league. It's going to be so much fun. Oh my goodness, it's going to be so good. If you are supporting the Nottingham Forest Curse, please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know if you're excited for the PPL, the Pokemon Premier League, because I am hype as hell for this thing. It's going to be so much fun. Woo! It's going to be great. Nottingham Forest Curse are going to put in work. I'm calling it now. Calling it now. Nottingham Forest Curse are the underdogs. We're not really. But we're going to be coming through. We're going to be coming for the cup. So, let's see what Nottingham Forest Curse can do. Who's your favorite member of the Nottingham Forest Curse? Let me know in the comments. Plus, if you enjoyed this team analysis, then please make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, leave a sub, all that good usual stuff. You guys know the deal. Uh, we'll be bringing you one match per week against everyone else from the uh, from the Pokemon Premier League. Uh, I'm so excited to get this thing going, so stay tuned for the first match, which will be coming soon. Um, we'll be facing... Who are we facing first? We're facing... Oh, how can I not remember? Just having a mind blank. Mind blank, mind blank, mind blank. I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen. As always, do it in editing if you can't remember live. Good God. Wait, I can check the, the fixture list. I'm facing... How can I forget? Funny story. First match, I'm facing Lace and MC. My, possibly my best friend on YouTube. And uh, we had a very close match in the sub league before. And then in a 1-0. On my favor. So, going to be facing him and the Philadelphia Flygons in week 1. So stay tuned for that match. That'll be fun. So, thank you for watching this video. And make sure to go check out everyone from the Premier League. Because they're all really great people. So... Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo.